Adam Nightingale. Uh, Michigan State's coming off a split at number six, Penn State. Um, tough loss on Friday, giving up less than a minute remaining, but uh, came back really strong with a 7-3 win on Saturday. So now we're going to take a breather from Big Ten. Uh, we head to Miami this weekend for a really big uh, December on tap with Minnesota and Michigan. So we talk about the Penn State series and the Miami series. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jamie mentioned we obviously went on the road here to Penn State this uh, this weekend. We knew we were going into playing a really good opponent, one, one we have a lot of respect for. Um, you know, when you, you know, you look at the game, I think um, you can get frustrated with the outcome. Um, I also think we were on the road. We were down one nothing. came back, made it 2-1. to one. Um, They came back, um, you know, and tied it. We scored again. Um, and then, obviously, the, the ending is not what we wanted. Um, you know, I think that's part of us growing as a group, too, too is – Learning how to close out games, um, you know, it starts with discipline and, and you know, the, the penalty on Gucciardi, I actually, I don't think his intent was to, to take a penalty. He, he lost an edge and slid into the guy, but that's hockey a little bit and you got to come up with a kill. And then, you know, I really liked our response, you know, and that um, says a lot about the group. We came back, I thought we were really good in the first period, the first 15 minutes. Obviously, the, um, they ended up tying it up again, and then it would have been easy, really easy for our group of guys to to fold or panic, and we killed the rest of that penalty off, and um, controlled the rest of the game. So it was a it was a good weekend for us. I think we we continue to grow. We still got a lot to work on, um, and obviously, as Jamie mentioned here, we're getting ready to go to Miami, a program um, obviously an old CCHA rival, um, a, a program that has a rich tradition. Um, just split, uh, you know, on the road with North Dakota, um, one of the top programs in the country. So um, it'll be another another real good test for us. Obviously, you know, Friday's game wasn't, uh, you know, not, not the outcome you wanted. Uh, but Michigan State erupted for, uh, for uh, seven goals, you know, the following night. Um, was there like a message as to, you know, what you guys or what you told your team, you know, in, in regards to, you know, obviously blowing, uh, you know, two, two goals in the last seven minutes? I think the message has been the same as we just want to get better. So we, we didn't like the result, but we thought we did a lot of good stuff in the game. We gave ourselves a chance to win the game. We didn't win the game. Um, so we watched the video and areas we want to get better at. And, and then it's always about your next game. And regardless if we would have won, lost, or tied, you know, we, we want to keep growing. And um, we did that on Saturday. Seven duels has not happened around here much in a long time. And I'm wondering what that. It just doesn't happen that much in, in college hockey. What, what that A says about you, was it just shots went in, that you, some puck luck, so to speak, or, but also what that does for the vibe of a team to put up seven in one night? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when the puck goes in, it, it's a good feeling for the group, you know, and I give the guys credit because, you know, I think we all watch the games. We get to watch our guys practice every day. I see our guys there. I came in on Sunday, you know, and I think this says a lot about the group. I came in on Sunday. My, my son had a game at 1030 at Suburban. Um, so I, he had to be there an hour and a half before. I, I dropped him off about 845. I went to the rink. was going to do some work. And we had like 12 guys in there. They were shooting pucks. They were working out. They, they asked our strength coach to come in. They wanted to do a stretch. So do I have a staff that's engaged and want, is committed to that? Like, I, I think our guys are getting better, you know. And, it, are we going to score seven goals every night? No, that's not that's not our game, you know, and um, that's not any team's game. You know, that, it's hard to score, um, but I think the guys are doing a lot of good things and they're getting rewarded. And we got to remember that when maybe the puck's not going in, you know. And I think we, when you do the right things in our sport, a lot of a lot of times good things happen. Adam, obviously uh, you believe in your players and your staff, but if I had told you six weeks ago that you were going to be that close. To back to back sweeps over top 10 teams, 10 in the pairwise, one point out of first place, would you have suggested I get a drug test? Yeah. I, no, I mean, I, I, I guess I don't look at it that way, and I hope our guys don't. It's just, I do think we have a good group of players, and I think we have a group of guys that want to be a team, and when you do that in any sport, and it's not about one guy, you can do some really good things as a group, you know? And so I thought early on you could tell that. Um, Guys weren't worried about where they were in the lineup. They weren't worried about whether they're on the power play. And um, it may seem like a simple thing, but I, I think when you get a group of people pulling on the same rope, you, uh, you can accomplish a lot. Now we still have a ways to go as a group. You know, want to keep improving. But um, I guess I never looked ahead at anything. I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. And so far, we're, we keep improving. Adam, to have a group like that in the back. 
to have a group like that, how much fun is it for you to be able to coach guys that you know are selfless and just want to improve each day? Yeah, no, it's awesome. You know, and that's going to be really important to our staff uh, moving forward. That that's how it's always going to be around here, and we're going to make sure we recruit kids that that are team first people. And I think that starts in the recruiting process, you know. And um, you know, if you're looking for guarantees, this isn't the spot for you. You're going to have to earn everything you get. And um, once you establish that relationship and that standard of how. Um, everything's earned, nothing's given. Um, you know, then I think the team can do a special thing. So yeah, it's been it's been a blast. You know, and really fun working with this group. Twenty goals the last four games against pretty good competition. Uh, is that something you're doing technically different, or is it a belief thing? Um, I don't know if technically. I would say I think guys are just getting better. You know, they're they're, they're we practice really hard. We. I'd like to think that um, you know we try to replicate the most frequent moments in the game and just rep those out, you know. And um, they train really hard. They're they're like I said, they're in on a Sunday after we just beat the uh, number six team in the country. I didn't ask those guys to come in, and I come in and I'm in my office, and all I hear is whack, 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 whack down the shooting room. Um, that gets you excited as a coach because that, that's all voluntary, you know. And that, when you get a group of guys. Um, working on their game and improving. And I think that was one of the messages we want to make sure are clear to our guys. Like sometimes in college hockey, you can be, you know, some of the players are a little bit older, 23, 24, um, and they think they're an old hockey player and they're, they're really, they're super young and they have so much growth left in their game. So um, I think truly believing that, hey, just because I'm a senior, I'm a grad, I got, I'm a young hockey player and I got to keep that passion and drive to continue to improve. And um, so far the group, you know, has done a really good job of it. I know you've liked this team's competitive fire all year, but did they show something to you by losing a gut-wrenching game on Friday and coming back and dominating on the road on Saturday? Yeah, and I think we have a little bit of confidence in that. I think if you look at the way our season's gone, like we lost our home opener at, uh, to Bowling Green, then we went on the road and played really well and, and beat them in a tough building to play in. You know, our first Big Ten game, we lost 5 nothing. Um, the next night we won in a shootout against Notre Dame, and that was kind of the message. We know how to do this, you know. We know how to to respond, and it's um, we don't we don't want to uh, not play our best, but that sometimes that happens, and it's about your next game, and um, that's something we we really want to make sure we keep with our group, regardless if we win or lose. It's always next game. Let's make make sure we're better. Is that also part of the changing the culture around here? I mean, from the outside, it just those are games that you always lost. In, in recent years, not always. Yeah. No, I think that's um, you know when when you when you don't get the result you want for long periods of time, sometimes you end up playing the game, you know, just hard enough to not to lose instead of really laying it on the line and, and um, understanding that it's not truly not about the scoreboard. It's about us playing our best, and if we play our best, I, I'd like to think nine times out of ten you're going to get the result you want, you know. And so we're just going to make sure we keep focusing on that. Well, in the last, I, I, well, last year, there are some players who are on this team, and uh, you know they didn't. Maybe they didn't uh, perform to you know expectation. Uh, Jagger Josh was one that comes to mind. You know, this year he's on pace for like thirty something points. Um, what do you say about like the? Uh, <sighs> What do you say about you know the, that sort of growth and development among like players that just again like you know new coach coming in and, and they're just overperforming or not overperforming but performing better? Yeah. Well, I think you know one thing that we did do we talked to the group like I didn't watch one ounce of video of our team last year. I don't think it's fair to the group. Um, it's a different a different staff, a different team, a different group, and I want to make sure everyone knew that um, everyone start with a clean slate. And if you want a spot in the lineup, you you go and grab it. And um, you know, Jagger's a guy that I think, you know, embraced that. And he's, to me, I don't think he's overplaying. Like, I think he's just playing to who he is. That's who he is, you know. And so he can't get comfortable either because we got competition in the lineup and there's, there's guys pushing. And, um, but that's, that's uh, a testament to the group because I think a lot of guys have, have uh, reached to what they should be as players. And, but I still think there's more there, you know, and I still think we have more, more in our lineup and, and hopefully we can get it out of them. You kind of mentioned this in your intro a little bit, but when it comes to going up at a team like Miami of Ohio, what have you seen that just off of you guys working yesterday and coming in that gets you prepared for the opportunity of having a, another another sweep coming up this weekend? 
Yeah, I mean, we're worried about having a good practice today. We got, you know, we got practice here at three, so we'll have a really good practice. We'll watch some, watch some film and um, keep growing as a group. And again, I think Miami, Miami plays in a really good league. Um, they're they're going to be really battle tested. Um, and then coming off a big win against uh, North Dakota, like that's a huge and, and a response from their team. Like they're, they showed the character they have. I know they're really well coached. They have a great coaching staff. Um, they have a really good goalie. You know, so the, the, there's no easy nights in college hockey. Like it's 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 amazing the parity. I'm thankful for it because you know our guys want to be pros, and if you want to be a pro, the reality is there's no nights off. Like you want to play in the NHL, there's there's no nights off. You know, so. Um, thankful for our schedule and, and excited to go back and play a, a formal rival in the CCHA. Coach, you mentioned the word team a lot when you're talking about the team, not individuals. Well, how important is it to have multiple go-to guys instead of maybe one or two on a team effort as you're trying to build this, as it seems like it's happening with this team right now? Yeah, no, I think having depth is important, you know, and because, um, again, you're, you're not always going to have your – your A game, and if you're built off, off just one one line, um, it's hard to have su sustained success to the, the way we want to have it, you know. And um, so, anytime you have depth, that's a, that's a that's a really good thing. And um, our job as coaches is to make sure, you know, to keep that depth that the competition's real for lineup spots. And um, that's why I think our practice have been good because guys understand that, and we got to make sure um, we keep that. Thank you.